Hi and welcome to this video where I'm going to talk about the reactions of aldehydes and ketones. Now these are relatively straightforward, there's nothing too complicated, but some of these tests can be used as diagnostic identification tools. Okay, so first one is reduction reactions, and this may be the first time you've come across reduction reactions. But both aldehydes and ketones can be reduced using a reducing agent or a reductant, such as lithium aluminium hydride or sodium borohydride. Okay, these are very strong reducing agents because they have their hydrogen ion as a hydride, which is an H minus ion. So it really wants to be oxidized, so it will reduce just about anything. Now the aldehydes are reduced back to form the primary alcohol that they came from, while ketones are reduced to form the secondary alcohol that they came from. Let me just very briefly show you that. Okay, so here's a couple of examples. On the top, very badly drawn, I apologise now, but that's the way it goes. I have um, a aldehyde, ethanol. You can tell it's an aldehyde because it has a C double bond O with a hydrogen at the end of the carbon chain. When we're going to reduce that, we're going to turn that back into the primary alcohol that it came from. So we're going to keep the carbon chain the same. We're going to turn the double bond O into an OH. And then we're going to fill everything else in with relevant hydrogens. Just like so. On the second molecule down, which is an, a ketone, you can tell it's a ketone because it has this C double bond O in the middle of the carbon chain. So this is propanone. And again, we're going to draw the same carbon chain, three carbons in this case. Where that double bond O was, we're going to put in an OH. And then we're going to fill in all of the other bonds with hydrogens. Now I've made a slight mistake with this one in that where I was trying to draw that first bond to the OH, it's gotten a little bit messy. And a marker might look at it and say, oh, is that a double bond O or a single bond O? I don't want the marker to have any kind of confusion as to what I'm doing. So I'm just going to redraw it to make it really obvious. So we've turned our aldehyde into a primary alcohol and our ketone into a secondary alcohol. And that is a reduction reaction. Okay, so the other reaction that can occur is the oxidation of aldehydes and only aldehydes. Ketones cannot be further oxidized. And that is the big difference between the two functional groups. We can oxidize aldehydes, we cannot oxidize ketones. And there are four possible oxidants that we can use to oxidize our aldehyde. We can use permanganate and dichromate, which we will use for pretty much every other oxidation reaction we're ever going to do. But we can also use two very specific reagents called Toland's reagent and Phalanx reagent. Phalanx reagent is very similar to Benedict's reagent, which you may have used in biology to test for glucose. Okay, same kind of reaction, same kind of reason. Now, both of these reagents, tolins and phalanx, are transition metals. The metal gets reduced and the aldehyde gets oxidized. But they are very weak oxidants, and so they will oxidize something that really wants to be oxidized, like an aldehyde or a ketone. Sorry, an aldehyde, not ketones but they won't oxidize most things. So you wouldn't use it for, say, oxidation of an alcohol or anything like that. And one of the things, or one of the reasons that these particular reagents are used is that they have some very distinct observations which can be made. So Toland's reagent, first off, is a silver ammonia complex ion. So if you did the ions assessment in year 12, then you will have made Toland's reagent, when you've taken your silver ions, you add a little bit of um, sodium hydroxide to make that brown precipitate, and then you make that brown precipitate dissolve by adding excess concentrated ammonia. Now, if you add Toland's reagent to 
an aldehyde and you heat it up, the aldehyde is oxidized to the carboxylic acid, while the Toland's reagent, the silver iron, is actually reduced back to silver metal. And you get the formation of a silver mirror on the inside of your test tube. So if you have a look at the picture on the right hand side of the screen, you can see two test tubes. The one on the left has a silver mirror look, and that is a test tube that has reacted with an aldehyde. The one on the right is basically colourless, maybe has a very faint brownish tinge, and that one has not reacted. So that's what often this is used to distinguish between an aldehyde and a ketone. So an aldehyde does react with Toland's reagent and a ketone doesn't. Okay, the most important thing to remember is that the aldehyde turns into the carboxylic acid and the ketone doesn't react. The silver iron is reduced back to silver metal. This is not a redox standard, so they will not ask you specific questions about the oxidation reduction reactions. But you do need to be aware that it is an oxidation reaction and that the silver colour is happening because the silver is being reduced while the aldehyde is being oxidised to the carboxylic acid. Okay, some very key statements in that. The other reagent that can be used is a different reagent but works in a similar way. And while there are two reagents that basically do the same thing, Toland's reagent, not Toland's, Phalen's reagent and Benedict's reagent. And both of those reagents are complex ions of copper 2 plus. So they are a blue colour, which you can see in the left hand test tube. When you add the Phalanx or Benedict's reagent to an aldehyde and again heat it, if in doubt, heat, please heat, um, what you see is the blue copper colour turning into a red colour orangey red, sometimes it's described as brick red, sometimes orangey red. In reality you can even get greenish colours sometimes, but stick with brick red, it's the standard answer. It's a precipitate of cuprous oxide, copper 1 plus oxide. Okay, so the copper 2 plus is being reduced to copper 1 plus, but the most important thing the aldehyde is being oxidized to a carboxylic acid yet again. And that is always the process with these. The aldehyde is being oxidized to the carboxylic acid. So that's the most important thing to keep in mind. And the color change is happening because the transition metal is being reduced. So those are the key reactions of aldehydes and ketones. Both of them can be reduced, but only aldehydes can be further oxidized to form a carboxylic acid. Thank you, and my next video will be looking at carboxylic acids particularly.